Hello and welcome to this Smith & Nephew Digital Education Module on the Physiological Basics of Wound Healing, which forms part of a series of modules you can access to develop your knowledge and understanding around wound care. Today, we will be discussing the physiology of wound healing. You will be able to discuss and identify the four phases of wound healing once you have completed this module. This will also help you identify when a wound is not healing and which phase of healing the wound is currently in. The wound healing process is a complex series of events that starts, as you can see, with an injury which can continue for weeks, months or even years. The phases of wound healing are hemostasis, acute inflammation, cell proliferation and repair, and epithelialization and remodeling of scar tissue. For a wound to heal successfully, all four phases must occur in the proper sequence and time frame. Many factors can interfere with one or more phases of this process, meaning that the wound could fail to heal. The first phase of healing, which is hemostasis, begins immediately after the wound occurs. Vascular constriction and fibrin clot formation occurs to stop the wound from bleeding. The surrounding wound tissue releases pro-inflammatory cytokines and growth factors to start the wound healing process. The second phase of healing is acute inflammation, which aims to prevent further blood loss through vasoconstriction. It is also the body's natural response to injury by preventing infection. Once the bleeding has stopped, the blood vessels within the wound dilate. This allows fluid to carry the cells into the wound that are needed for the healing process. In the diagram, you can see that in the presence of infection, the wound gets stuck in a cycle of chronic inflammation and tissue damage which prevents the wound from healing. A variety of factors influence this cycle of inflammation. For example, the presence of bacteria, patient comorbidities and factors from out the environment. The third phase of healing is proliferation. When new tissue is rebuilt, the cells responsible for the development of new blood vessels, collagen and other connective tissue are called fibroblasts. New blood vessels are stimulated by macrophage activity and begin to grow into the matrix, a process known as angiogenesis. The final phase of wound healing is epithelialization, which relies on epithelial cells migrating over the surface of the wound. These specialized cells, located in hair follicles, sweat glands and around the edges of the wound, migrate over the newly formed granulation tissue and reduce the size of the wound by contracting. This results in a pulling together of the wound edges. In order for epithelialization to occur, there needs to be healthy granulation tissue and a moist wound healing environment. Maturation happens once the wound is closed. Collagen is reorganized to form a scar but the skin will only ever regain 80% of its original strength. Maturation can take months and in large open wounds, this process can take years. To check your knowledge and understanding, try and answer the quiz questions. Well done. We have now completed this bite-sized module. Take the time to reflect on how you will take some of what you have learnt and apply it into your daily practice. Please click on the link to go to the full 15 minute version of this presentation. Once this is completed, you will have the opportunity to download NMC revalidation forms. Thank you for your time today. 
please remember to look at the other sections to access additional modules to help you on your learning journey.